Thank you, councillors, fellow members, uh, for attending this evening's uh, council meeting. Uh, first of all, moving to public question time, item one, public question time. Um, we have, do we have any members of the public? We do. Uh, mind, members of public members, question time is 15 minutes. To statement, it should be kept to a question, not a statement. Uh, and in the case where there's many members of the public uh, present, kept as short as possible, uh, that's some time for other questions. So, do we have any questions, Mr. Benson? I do, yes. Okay. Um, I feel quite lonely at the back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I would actually think that there's probably one issue which has been up most in many of your minds over the last week. Um, I'm not going to give it a title, but I am going to ask a question, and if you can relate that question to uh, what's been going on in the last week, then that would be helpful to me. So I'll read the question if I have. It's carefully worded so that you don't take offence. I hope. If East Grinstead councillors represent the town and other bodies of local government, and issues arise that affect East Grinstead, do councillors agree that they should vote in a way that reflects the views of their East Britain state constituents or follow guidance of the political party that they represent? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, well. Thank you Mr. Benson. I think what I can say from being a councillor, a town councillor, um, certainly it suggests, I think, it pertains to planning issues. Certainly for the when being serving on the Town Council Planning Committee, I think elsewhere in other organisations, councillors always take note of what their residents say. They always take note, which is important, but all importantly, uh, reports, information, documents, etc., submitted by third parties um, for, those, for those particular applications, and also the advice and recommendations from officers and also for, from, for example, other third parties like the planning inspector. So I think from that, as, in, as, in, as is an obligation, we follow advice and input from multiple sources, including residents, but at the end of the day, we have to look at all times at the evidence, the policies, and also the law, the legislation surrounding the particular case, and, my, and make our decisions accordingly, in a transparent, thorough way. That would be my answer. Well done. Uh, and town, town leader, Councillor Swetman, would like to add anything or not? Nothing, but I just said that. Must let, uh, tell me uh, if I must just say that as uh, district town, uh, district councillors also serving on town council, uh, we do represent our views of our constituents in the best way we possibly can. But we also, it's not just for the these squints, it's for the whole of the district we have to look at. So I um, hope that answers your question as well, Mr. Benson. Well, well thank you. Uh, I don't thank, you thank you for your answers. I, I, I guess I've heard there's no right of reply, so thank you very much. Okay. All right. Well, if you excuse me, I don't think that I'm required for the rest of the meeting. So no, sorry. May I, may I of course you can. And thank you for attending. Thank you very much. Well, you might like to stick around and have a glass of wine. I'm so sorry, Jim. You might like to stick around and have a glass of wine. We can have a more in depth talk. Nice to meet you all again. And you. Thank you. Okay. Before we move on to item two or three, uh, Councillor Visser, Deputy Mayor, can't attend tonight. Which unfortunately is on holiday. I'd like to recommend or to propose Councillor Dooley as, a de as my deputy for tonight, if that's okay. So I propose that for that in a second. I accept that, Fanny. Yes, yeah, so Mrs. Fanny. Can I show of hands in support? Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> okay. So moving on to apologies for absence. As I said, Councillor Visser is away, and Councillor Ron Spawn is returning from Lindel Pine. He substituted for me the town's winning, which I greatly appreciate. Um, I propose these are, a second. Are there any more? We also have Mrs. Belsey, who is on Mid Sussex District Council Chairman Duty. Thank you, thank you. So, Mrs. Belsey as well. I propose those. Can I have a second? I'd like to second that, Town Mayor. All those in favour? 
Thank you very much. Um, before we move on any further, can I remind everyone to sign the register book also for tonight and um, Nair making, because actually for Nair making, I didn't forget to sign it myself. So just double check, <laughs> just double check yourself. <laughs> okay, so moving on to item three, uh, the minutes of the town council meeting held on the 9th of May the 23rd of June. Um, this is for accuracy. I'd like to propose that. Could I have a second? I'd like to say that town mayor. To those in favour? Thank you very much. We're moving to item four to receive any declarations of personal or pecuniary <laughs> interest in the pattern. Can I just, um, just to clarify, so I know you talked about- Sorry, sorry. interrupt you. Can I ask all councillors when they uh, speak to the right. Okay, so yeah. Thank Can you. I just um, declare that I, I was a family member of the Bonfire Society and been quite involved in helping them since it set up. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bessie. Are there any other? No. Okay. So moving on to town mayor's announcement. So uh, really tonight it's focusing on uh, my list of engagements, which I've great honour and privilege of you electing me as your town mayor. A number of events attended, about 19 in total. Um, it was a busy schedule, as you all know, and obviously it began, began in earnest with the Her Majesty's Pack and Jubilee weekend. And I'd like to thank us and Mrs. Farron the team of council volunteers and the town clerk and Mrs. Ham uh, Hampson, uh, uh, Kirsty, so no, sorry, uh -huh. Hamper, thank you, Hamper, and other staff for organising the Beacon Lighting Town Mayor's Tea Party and East Court Light that weekend. So thank you all for doing that. They were they were all enjoyed by members of the public. Thank you. Uh, as you can see, events included the Being Navy AGM, one of my uh, two charities, NTC Founders Day. Armed Forces Day and Sackville Schools Art Exhibition last Wednesday. Uh, the quality of work was superb and the selection is on show at St Swithin's Church so, this week, so if you can attend, please do. Uh, during my visit to Sackville, I met the retiring head of art, Phil Andrews, who first joined, I believe, in the mid-90s and has been involved in coaching rugby at East Grinstead Rugby Club. So on behalf of the council, I'd like to thank him for his time and dedication in East Princeton at Sackville, Sackville School. Lastly, I'd like to thank everyone for volunteering yesterday at Eastport Live, which was very successful. Um, I, is it okay to mention how much we raised? Preliminary? Please do. I mean, we're over two, two Eastport Live so far. The first one raised something like 674 pounds. And yesterday, because of, as usual, volunteers, it was very well organized, the super weather, high turnout, we raised in total Something like eleven hundred and fifty pounds. Wow, that's so I, I would like to thank. I think you need to mention. Yes, I was. Little electric device. <laughs> from the last, from the last East Court live, a number of councillors <coughs> and officers raised the fact we should have a card machine. Uh, well done to Dan for arranging that within a couple of weeks, and that yesterday raised three hundred and eighteen pounds on its own. Oh, the, I think the buckets raised eight hundred and fifty pounds yeah. roughly. So, but it's a team effort. Thank you to you all. The weather played a huge part, but uh, that will be greatly appreciated by the charities at the end of the year. Um, and also last night, it was a civic service, uh, but it was an excellent event. I'd just like to thank Vicar Andrew Hawkins for organizing it and holding it. So thank you very much. Um, so we move to item six to receive such communications as the leader of the council, council may desire to put the floor of the council, the council. Thank you very much, Town Mayor. 
Um, just for, to the benefit of uh, members here and for those that may be watching on YouTube, as you may or may not know, the draft plan site document was fully adopted at the District Council last Wednesday. And to be very brief, that secures our five year housing land supply. And um, obviously, that will stop speculative development. And just to remind you that though the DPD and planning applications are separate, it will still have to go through the proper planning process with the looking at the infrastructure, which in these squints is a huge issue down cruelly down road, and we all know that. Uh, so we're going to have to look at that very carefully and fight for our residents in the best possible way we can to mitigate against that. But overall, not to have a five-year housing land supply would just be, you know, have no control whatsoever, really. So that's that, just to inform members. The other thing, because the town mayor has really stolen my thunder a bit, but he's called <coughs> it's our 10th anniversary. It's been going 10 years. And uh, it's got to what it is now. Remember the first one we had, uh, there was a bit of scaffolding down there with a tarpaulin over the top. <laughs> but it was now, and I reckon, if anyone wants to correct me, probably over 2,000 people here. And talking to the people as I was going round, I say, what a fantastic event it is. So we definitely got to keep that going as long as I'm around. Mm -hmm. And uh, just people really enjoy it. And um, and like um, town mayor said, the staff and all those involved in helping out on the day were so blessed, really, otherwise it wouldn't happen. Uh, just another couple of updates. As you know, at FNGP, we've instructed the town clerk to look in at, at uh, about the purchase of the police station. So that's ongoing to find out, it's on the market. So hopefully they'll deal with us before it goes onto the market so we can come back to uh, the committees uh, to look at if, when we get some sort of response back. The other thing is St Barnabas, as you know, we're well in the close, but uh, to give you an update, uh, the, um, that is still in the hands of the church's FNGP committee uh, for rubber stamping. So it's been a, a long process of probably slower than local government, actually, but uh, hopefully we'll get an answer on that soon. So. Uh, that's basically all I've got to say and have to say questions. Uh, thank you, Town Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Swift, the leader. Do we have any questions for the leader? Councillor. Uh, thank you, Town Mayor. Yes, thank you, Leader, for a very comprehensive um, update. I was going to ask about survivors, so thank you for mentioning that. In regards to the public question tonight and obviously your statement on the site allocation DPD document, can you um, state whether this Town Council will have a formal position statement as a council regarding lobbying the district council, the planning authority, regarding working with Surrey County Council, West Sussex and particularly Tanbridge to get the junction at the start and also in one lane, amongst others, um, as a condition precedent um, before any planning application was made, um, given that you are a senior member of the district council, I'm hoping you can say yes. So, uh, yeah, uh, thank you for that question. Uh, yes, I, I think you're quite right, uh, uh, Councillor Whitaker. I'm more than happy to get involved in, in that, but also uh, it needs a great deal of input, input from our chairman of planning here, uh, along with the town clerk. So hopefully, jointly, we can look at that and mitigate against that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions? Well, I don't believe there are any, so we will move on. Um, item seven, to dispose of any business outstanding from the last meeting. Uh, there is not, but there are So item eight, great pleasure uh, for Councillor John Belsey, Deputy Leader of Mid-Sussex, to give us a principal council update. Uh, over to you. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, and it's um, an honour and privilege to be able to uh, present to you all today uh, so thank you very much for the invitation. I thought I'd start by just saying what my cabinet portfolio actually was, just in case there was any uh, doubt. So it changed recently when I became debt leader. But the first item on the portfolio is to deputise for the leader. And I'm not sure how much of those confidence is, but he's not going to wait at all. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that bit is quite short. Um, 
However, uh, the portfolio does include finances for council, corporate estates and facilities, landscapes, um, which is parks and playgrounds and open spaces, uh, plus waste, centre for outdoor sports, and the ASOM and sports clubs and organisations. So I just thought I would touch on some of those as far as they affect East Quinstead at the moment. Um, just in terms of waste, uh, as I've tried to make uh, the update as relevant to East Quinstead as possible. Mm -hmm. So uh, Mid Sussex's waste services include um, responsibility for the moves of fly tipping on public land, uh, street cleaning and cleansing, parks and playground cleaning, and also our waste services. So our black, blue, and green bins, plus things like the bulky waste collection, chemical waste, etc. Just a few things to highlight. Um, I know residents have long been concerned about Loudell's Lane, and uh, we're working with Baldwin's councils, including councils in Mockford, Town Clark, Clarion, and um, West Sussex, to see if we can all find a way forward. And um, <coughs> spoke with offices, I know they will do a cleanse of um, uh, fly tipping that has taken place there prior to the new solution um, bit coming forward. So fingers crossed there'll be some improvements around that thing. Uh, we also get quite a few concerns about uh, sort of street litter. Uh, so last month we've got new street cleaning vehicles. I don't know if people have seen them, but they're very nippy, robust, they look great and they work well. Um, I'm seeking that we do more publicity on this so people are aware. Um, but we're looking particularly at our more difficult roads, which come up often, so particularly Blackwell Hollow and Beeching Way. Uh, there was quite a bit of litter in Blackwell Hollow a few weeks ago, so the street cleaning vehicles did come down and do a sort of vehicle litter pick, but um, they really, those places need to be uh, litter picked by hand. Um, I've raised with officers, and we are looking at trying to establish quarterly litter pick by hand, working closely with West Sussex to make sure whenever that as long as the litter picking, we know when the road closures are going to be so that we can come in and do the litter pick at the same time as the road closures. So that's something I'm hoping that we will see improvement, further improvements on. Uh, food waste. Now, uh, we've got a food waste trial and it's on track to launch in September. Uh, one of the routes will be in East Winston, Stroke, Asheswood. Um, residents should get a leaflet confirming this in the second half of July. So when I say residents, affected residents should get an initial leaflet in the second half of July. Before then, there will be a briefing to the town council, uh, so particularly to the town clerk, um, and it will be made clear where the trial is happening. I think we will all be given route maps as where the, the, the trials will be happening, but obviously it will be going to the residents who are on the trials, so, so, so it should be quite self-explanatory. We will then be ramping up the publicity on this with a view to launching in September. But for those houses not on the trial, we will also be refocusing on um, what we can do to recycle. So we did a test last November, and 39% of um, waste was food waste by weight, and 15% of it was still plastics. So we are going to help people do more for recycling their plastics, but also going to be encouraging more health composting as well. Uh, I don't yet have a length of trial, and the reason for this is that we're waiting for West Sussex to make a commitment to their food waste recycling facility, but we're also waiting for the results of government consultations on uh, waste services more generally, which will affect the position. So we're hoping for that over the next few months, which will allow West Sussex to make their commitments. Uh, we want to push ahead anyway. It's no reason not to push ahead and improve our recycling rates. We, we must look to do this. Um, and so hopefully there'll be further updates later in the year. I get quite a few questions as well regarding the garden waste. And um, we have uh, improved our capacity, but the, the thing is that uh, the garden waste services are incredibly popular. Um, I know there's also obviously new houses coming on stream who also want garden waste. So we haven't got a waiting list at the moment, but there is a few months lead time between signing up and actually coming on board. Um, so we are looking at this, but again, it's something similar in that the government paper is due to make an announcement on whether garden waste should be a free service or not. So that will have massive implications for us. So we don't want to invest heavily in the service and then find that um, it, it, it's changed. So again, hopefully that will be something that we can look at over the next six to 12 months. So that's 
sort of the position regarding the waste. Just regarding parks and playgrounds, uh, there are exciting plans <laughs> for both Mount Noddy and Brookton's Park, which are in our master planning stage. They're just finalising the last consultation of what Mount Noddy will look like. It's in the budget programme for this year and will be for the next two years. Um, and offices are hopeful, I mean, indeed I'm pushing, <laughs> that there will be space in the ground this financial year. So it will, should start soon. Uh, the plans include an improved sort of plaza, multi-use games area, improved pitches, teenage activities, improved playground, drainage, top facility, wild meadow, and environmental planting. So uh, I'm very excited to what that will look like. I look forward to uh, that taking place over the next two, two years. Uh, hot on its heels are what I consider even more exciting plans for Brooklyn Park. Uh, we are looking at the stream that runs through it, opening it up. I know one of the most popular items there has been to look at potentially um, helping down the stream to create a wetland and then having a ball walk out over the wetland, which would both be you know, really exciting to sort of walk over, but also very educational. Uh, so I think mean, that's going to be the main plan, and I expect that to come forward this year for next year. So they will be running side by side effectively. Um, personally, I'm also pushing for a splash pad there, as I think East Winston does need one. I know lots of residents would like to see it. Uh, at the moment, I've, honestly, I think the splash pad's more realistic than the Lido coming back, but the Lido is not off the table, but it would have to be subject to a business case. So I, I, I really would like to see uh, some children's water play coming into East Winston. Um, on the wider playgrounds this year, it also sees the further development of pollen play playgrounds. So that's very well used facility, and look forward to seeing what exciting the plans they have too. Uh, from an estate's perspective, we're busy progressing a number of sites in East Winstead. Uh, we have been progressing the plans from four years ago regarding selling in Bourne Lane Car Park. It's likely going to develop a who's buying it unconditionally. I know planning officers have worked with all potential. Uh, developers and purchasers and are very keen to ensure it is not overdeveloped and fits within the landscape of the one main area. Uh, it will be for the developer to put forward an application for that site. I know it won't be universally welcomed by East Wilson residents, however, things like the capital receipt for that uh, will help uh, facilitate other projects. So, for example, that capital receipt can help facilitate Swan Mead redevelopment where we have put in forward. Swan Meads, which was the old AGK site and looked very derelict on Queen's Road, that is coming forward with temporary accommodation for six units. And I hope the planning application will come in on that later this calendar year. Uh, it's a great location for um, temporary accommodation, being so close to the town centre, so you wouldn't need a car to be there. And we've got ready access to these Winston facilities. Um, we're also working towards a solution for the old post office mm -hmm. in Quarry, and I hope that there will be an announcement on that in the two. Uh, we've got parking strategy coming forward, and I hope that we will also be able to use that to consider a feasibility study for adding at least an extra layer of car parks to Queen's Walk. Uh, we, I know there are huge amounts of concerns of parking and traffic in the town centre, where, where cars go, Dudley's Road, etc. So we will have to look and see where, where that might take us. Uh, I also had, as I said, the sports club liaison role. I'll be at the sports council tomorrow evening. Rex already does a great job working with the sports clubs and organisations. We spoke to as does Steve Audi as your town council representative. I hope I can work with everyone on that to support where I can. I've been trying to find a home for the boxing club as an example, not easy. <laughs> I've tried a lot of venues, but I will help to make sure that we leave no stone unturned and uh, see you know, if, if there is a solution that I'm very willing to work with people to try and find it. And then I just want to say bye, I also sit on the grants panel at Mid Sussex. So we recently gave a grant to the Water Fountain to Eastman Society for £4,000, which is what they requested. Uh, it was coming, it came forward to us with 2,000 recommendation, but we restored it to the original 4,000, which was requested to help with the cleanup. Um, 
So look forward to hopefully to providing what other support might be necessary to get that back working at district level. Uh, we've also given grants to many businesses in East Grinstead, but we could always do it more. I think East Grinstead tends to get less applications than Hayley Teeth and Burgess Hill. So anything we can do to publicise things like the micro business grants, uh, where we're happy to map to give to match to help expand business services, take on new people, develop new products, expand their reach. In that could be just help with websites, etc. We have got grants available, and it'd be great to see sorts of businesses applying for for them. We also have grants available to improve shop fronts, etc. Again, where uh, businesses do need to put something in, but we will uh, very helpfully um, <coughs> help support them with uh, some additional funding. So all in all, I would say we've got uh, yeah, financially some difficult times, as we all know, during the pandemic, and this time has been challenging. Um, but we have had a strong reserves position. We're looking to be on budget so far this year. So although we've got lots of challenges that we're facing, I hope you can see from that update that we've got some great projects to look forward to. I think we're we'll really back to our community and that we can still look forward to some very positive times ahead for our town. So thank you very much for the rest of the speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dunst. Mm -hmm. Any questions? I can see Councillor Mrs. Bennett raising your hand. Thank you very much, Town Mayor, and uh, thank you for that long explanation. We really appreciate it. I wanted to take this opportunity, Councillor Belsey, to say thank you to you for pushing East Grinstead and the needs of East Grinstead at your level at district because it's been desires that we've all long had, and it's so nice to hear them being talked about close to being uh, near fruition. So uh, the first question I've got is about Loudles Lane. And obviously that's a matter close to my heart to declare an interest as the West Sussex County Councillor. And indeed I chaired the early meetings on this issue because my residents have raised it so many times with me. And I just wanted to thank Councillor Mrs Mockford and also Councillor Norman Webster, who, who've also um, been very supportive. Um, and I think the difficulty has been, Councillor Belsey, is that we've struggled to find the landowner. Um, and with the constant fly tipping, it's been very difficult to reach the end. And you've kindly said that you will clear the area once we've got to that point, which we're very grateful for. Um, my aspiration is eventually it will become a walking cycling route, which I think will be regularly used as a shortcut uh, from one end of East Grinstead to the other. So my question is, how long do you think it, it might take? I know that's probably a big question. And finally, very quickly, regarding Holland's Way Play Park, um, I'm sure that you are, but would you... Um, liaise closely with the Stone Quarry Community Cafe and all the needs regarding that area. Mm. I would be very grateful. Thank you. Shall I take that down there? Yes, of course. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so, um, well, firstly, just regarding the Stone Quarry Cafe, yes, obviously, it's possible in the future that it will be even nearer to um, the, the play park. So, it'd be really important that uh, whatever goes into sort of integrates and interfaces well with the uh, state, should say, with the old post office. So I look forward to that coming to fruition. And yeah, thank you for the comments regarding that I was saying. Um, yeah, and the, the, for, for all the work that you, Councillor Oster, Councillor Smockford have done over the years. And I'm well aware of the very long um, trail of it too. Um, so including a bit of disappointment on the way and frustration. I completely get that. Um, in terms of timelines, what I think I might do is just restrict myself to saying that I think that we can, Hope you're very hopeful for this calendar year for uh, the removal of the fly tipping for the bollards and for CCTV. And so, a very good prognosis for the first phase, which I'm sure will be followed in due course by the wider uh, cycling and walking path. Fantastic, thank you. <coughs> um, I think Councillor Sweatman, you're next. Uh, Councillor. Yeah, uh, thank you, Terry. Yes, a, a question uh, referencing online car park. A um, bit disappointed to see that go because I think that's mm. really well used. Mm. But I, I wondered if you could, if you know, when it was just muted some time ago, probably a few years ago, that the car park would be moved so it wouldn't be lost. But maybe you don't know that and can't answer that. 
But so I, I just wondered whether maybe you have an update. I can tell you so, that I mean that the, the, the car park was up put up as uh, decided to be set back in 2018 and it's been attempted to be sold on at least three different occasions. So uh so, so we've, all we've really done now is just actually worked hard on the marketing side to make sure we've got to buy it, but that's always been the um way that Inborn Lake Car Park is going to go. What I would say is that. Uh, for any new developments for concerns and judgments about saying more flats or something like that go there is that I've as I said I don't anticipate it to be an overdevelopment to the site. So I expect there'll be some car parking on site for existing residents. I know that won't necessarily help people that use that car park already, but um I'd be happy to uh, pick up uh council spectrum as to what 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 alternative car parking facilities might be available for people. Those spaces and see if we can find uh, something that um, that helps uh, meet their requirements. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Raymond. Thank you for that update. Could you outline the key differences between that policy agenda and that of the Green Party, the Liberal Democrats, or the Labour Party? And I know that the elections are coming up in May of next year, and I think voters could do with knowing what's the sort of key dividing lines between the Conservative Party and the rest. Uh, <laughs> um, well, Councillor Amos, um, this is what the District Council is doing at the moment. Um, all parties will come forward with their own manifestos for next year. And I, I wouldn't know what the Labour like, Dem or Green Party manifestos will be for next year. Um, I don't think we know our own. I expect we want to build on the work that we've outlined is already being done, and we will look to be ambitious uh, to uh, have things coming to our town, like mentioned like splash pads, etc., that residents. Uh, can aspire to, but we have to do it within uh, a sort of sensible, you know, a realistic time frame and a realistic budget. And so, um, that's, I think, going to be a lot of things for other parties to come up with their own manifestos, whilst um, you know, we've got enough on that date <laughs> trying, to, uh, trying to work out our own. That's no thank you for the question. Thank you. Are there any other questions from Council? On that basis, then I'll ask Councillor Dewey to say thank you. I'd like to thank you for a very concise report, Councillor Elsey. Um, it's really interesting and exciting to see some of the initiatives that we will hopefully get with the new scheme said, such as the um, amenities for play parks and the Lilo potentially, or the, the wet area. And I think there's there's evidence of that in other sort of towns that proves it is a really popular public thing. Um, Little Hampton being one that I know, just my son was there recently with his grandparents. So I think it'd be great to see those kind of things happen. So thank you for your report. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to item nine, which is to receive and consider the minutes of the committees listed in the agenda. So I'll invite Councillor Rohde to propose the panel minutes. So Thank you very much, Hannah. Um, I'd like to propose all of the uh, planning uh, minutes on block if, if you uh, would permit me. Um, first, uh, planning uh, meeting 20th of April 2022, planning meeting 9th of May 2022, the 11th of May 2022, 30th of May 2022, and the 20th of June 2022. Pages numbers 187 to 196. And minute number 253 to 260, uh, page numbers 1, and minute numbers 1 to 3, page numbers 5 to 12, minutes numbers 13 to 19, page numbers 13 to 19, minute numbers 20 to 26, and finally, page numbers 24 to 30, and minutes numbers 37 to 43. Uh, I can have a second, that would be great. I second that. Thank you yeah. very much. Do I, do I, I don't know how to say that. Yeah. This is fine. Okay, well, thank you. That is now uh, approved. Moving on um, to uh, Councillor Woodgate for public services. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'd like to propose minutes for public services on the 9th of May. Pages two and uh, minutes four to six, and public service on the 21st of June, minutes 30 at uh, page 31 to 35, minutes 
44 to 55. I have a second. So, any questions? Can I propose those things? Or can we vote on those? Thank you. Can I just clarify, just to yes. um, remind everybody that you are voting to accept the decisions within those these minutes. So yes. it is a vote for all members of council, not just those who sit on that particular. Thank committee. you for clarifying that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, being, so those have been carried public services. I now move to Councillor Mrs. Farron for her presentation. Thank you, Tamara. Um, I would like to propose the uh, minutes for a meeting of tourism meeting held on the 9th of May 2022, pages three, minutes seven to nine, and the meeting on the 16th of June 2022, pages 20 to 23, and minutes 27 to 36. Please may I have a second for that. Right, second that. Thank you, Councillor Dooley. Do you have any questions? I'd like to move to um, propose to accept those minutes. Thank you, thank you, Tamara. And finally, we move to Councillor Stepman for finance and general purposes. Uh, thank you, Tamara. <coughs> I'd like to uh, propose the, the minutes for the finance and general purposes committee on the 9th of the 5th, 2022, page numbers 4, minute number 10 to 12, and 23rd and 622, page number 36, 41, 56 to 76, uh, minute number. May I have a second, please? By Thank you, Council. Do you have any questions? All those in favour? Thank you. Okay, so thank you for that. Moving on to item 10 to authorise the scene of the following documents. It's a grant of exclusive right of burial numbers 2255, 2256, 2257, 2258. 2259 and 2260. Um, I'd like Council to approve these. Let's see these. I propose that about the second, please. I second that, Town Mayor. Thank you, Council. Uh, can I have a show of hands? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Item 11 uh, outside body representative. Uh, you can see uh, from, the, from the wording there, um, we asked the council to ask to appoint Councillor Mrs. Moxford as the East Quinstead Town Council representative to the Central Sussex Climate Network. Um, I'm happy to propose that. Could I have a second? I'd like to second that, Tamir. Thank you. Are there any questions before we move to the vote? Oh, so Councillor Owen. Would Councillor Mockford... Please stand. Oh, oh, yes. um, would Councillor Mockford accept that there is an optimum level of pollution and that is not zero? Um, I don't think we've actually been to this yeah. I might be a little bit strange in my response, but I'm sure that there is an optimum level, but I'm happy to find out and I will be a writing report having been to the meeting, which I will present to the council. Thank you. Any other questions from council? No? So I move to the vote then. All in favour, please raise your hand. Thank you. So moving on to item 12, it's the request for the newly formed East Grimstead Community Bonfire to use the town council press, but uh, requested. Because obviously you've got the papers, you would have read that. But there is an update from the town clerk. Uh, I believe you did meet with the chair earlier this week. Uh, last Thursday. Oh, it was last two, Thursday. Yes. Okay. Um, um, Thursday. Thank you, Tamara. Um, yes, just to give you a very, very brief update. Um, I wasn't 100% sure um, as to some of the um, uh, intentions and the uh, the way that the, that the new community bonfire was going to work. So, um, so, so Mr. Jones came to see me, then long talked through it. He wanted to know about the possibility of making applications for grants and things like that. So we took him through all of that. Um, he, um, he said that the, the EGCB, and this is very important, the East Grinstead Community Bonfire, they are not a bonfire society. And I'll come back to that in just a moment. Mm -hmm. 
I'm very keen to work with the council and to be a group to raise funds for good causes in the community while still having bonfire celebrations. Whilst they have worked with bonfire societies in order to set up, they're not going to become one, and instead they wish to be a wholly community-based group without the ties to the history of Sussex bonfire and any religious division from that. Uh, Mr Jones, the chairman, has made very clear that they're interested in inclusion and not division. The group are also willing to assist the council with events when road closures need managed, stewards, etc. They've already offered to come and help at next um, East Court Live. Uh, moving forward, it is um, East Green's community bonfire that the council will ask to assist with occasions which call for lighting, extinguishing the beacon. Uh, the group would be applying for consideration of the community revenue grant later this year and also we should discuss with the, with the council at some point in the future of including them as a standing community grant each year to help cover costs. Uh, the crest, therefore, is their badge and emblem will show that the town council is supporting not just their works, but also the funds and the good works and support that they intend to plow back into the community. Um, and it will be, uh, yes, a town council effectively will be a party to their good works, um, which will then be supported by the East Grinstead Bonfire, uh, Community Bonfire. And, um, yeah, that's that's pretty much, much my update um, with regards to where things have moved on to. Right, I'm going to come to Councillor Sweatman and questions from uh, the council in a second. But for clarity, I'd just like for the record to say part of this was, I guess, inadvertently facilitated by myself because the, I think the chairman um, is a member of being neighbourly, a volunteer of being neighbourly East Grinstead. And I met him at the AGM and he raised about the fact they're aiming to establish the bonfire for next year, not this year, but September, October 2023. And I suggested he contacted the town clerk, potential, potentially for grant or any interactions with the town council, but the, the actual uh, crest was not discussed. That's where we are. <coughs> town clerk, when we, when you and I discussed this last week, we were both slightly um, not concerned that the links to the martyrs and religion was an issue. Um, and I don't want to leave council at all, I'm just raising it. From your meeting, do you think that has been somewhat assuaged or Yes, I, 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 I think so. They, they were very clear that their constitution, which I included with the papers, will uh, make it clear that they are not to become a bonfire society. They, they're very mindful, they, they understand the history, which is, which is a great history of, of uh, uh, a bonfire here in Sussex particularly, um, but um, they, they are mindful that uh, setting up a new uh, bonfire group, a community bonfire, where they want us to concentrate on, on, on good deeds, on plowing money back into the community, on supporting the community, as well as having the fun of bonfire, which will probably be in October, I think Councillor Bell's might look at that one, I think we'll talk about October next year yeah. as being the date they're going to do it, um, or they're proposing to, um, but it, it, although they will go and, and, and march with the others when, when they I'm sure you all know how fireworks, they all get together, they all go for a march, they all have a lovely evening. Um, and um, they, they want to they want to honor the um the history the historical links with bonfire um uh volunteers who have who lost lives in, in, in wars. Um, that's something all bonfire groups do. Um, but uh, they do not intend on their walk, they do not intend to. To, to stop or pause at the martyr memorials at all. Um, they, they think that they need to move on and be something which is all about the community and not about past divisions. Okay, well, thank you for cl clarifying that. Bill and the council, I know this is a relatively new topic that's come to you. We haven't discussed it before, so I'll please ask questions if you have any. Uh, Councillor Swift, thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, <coughs> Uh, yes, I was in the office uh, the other day, I think it was late, on Thursday, Thursday thank you. Uh, when Mr Jones was talking to town clerk and I was in, invited in, in just to have a talk. Now, when bonfires were first muted about and they were going to go down here, I had several concerns. Um, firstly, I'm not a great particular fan of fireworks, so I understand there's different levels, so hopefully they can use a lower level of noise. Because of animals, we do get a lot of complaints, and I've got animals myself, 
and they did get frightened and I think that's, that's, that's a big, big issue. Also, one of my main concerns is of was where is the parade going to go? I understand they're going up through the high street. Uh, but I've been told, which has satisfied my concerns, is that they are going straight place, straight past the play park to the court house, turn right and then zigzag past the ambulance station down the drive. Because my main concern was either light torches coming past the listed building, which this is, and also uh, people standing out on our terraces, uh, and they're beautiful terraces. If it's wet, the ground could be all churned up and take cost a lot of money to put that right. <coughs> Having um, talked to Mr. Jones, and it was a very good conversation, he's, a, he's willing to work with the town council and he's alleviated a lot of my concerns. And so what I just said, the terraces will be policed by them. And um, the, the, the may even be talk of a, um, a VIP tent uh, for the, by the Bonfire Society on the terrace, invitation only, which would actually stop general public coming on there, which is one of my concerns. So he's pretty on board with that to work with us. Um, also, yeah, we got the, the, the forest. So overall, it's it, it's it's a balance, but overall, um, I think the the benefits of the bonfire society outweigh the harm, and that's my my position. So personally, I'm happy to work with them. As the town clerk has alluded to, it's not just a bonfire per se. It's a bonfire that they could get involved in the community throughout the whole year probably work with other organisations such as the Lions and other community groups to raise money and charitable causes. So hopefully bring more people in, followers of the Bonfire Society, to make it more inclusive uh, society for instance. So on those grounds, I'm quite supportive. Thank you, Town Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Stone. Uh, do we have any uh, questions? Oh, Councillor Mrs. Thank you very much, Town Mayor. Um, Town Leader, I was first of all wondering whether your first concerns were the fact that you used to be a firefighter it and uh, <laughs> it went against everything you stood for. <laughs> but um, my question is, I think, the way I see it is we've had <coughs> enough councillors who've been, been here for so many years have seen the most amazing volunteers in this town who are of a certain age and yet they volunteer in so many different groups and things you'll see one volunteer volunteering for so many other different groups and for me I see this as a new community group that can encourage some of our younger people to volunteer and take over the mantle of, of our amazing generation of volunteers that are now getting slightly older and might not be able to do the things that they used to do so for me that's what comes out of this and um i i think it sounds fantastic so thank you okay. that's the radio that's the uh, thank you Simon. uh i would say that having uh, been to um a bonfire society at seaford a couple of years ago um with uh, mr jones um, I, I wholeheartedly agree that this is a great idea, and I think it's going to be a, an amazing visitor attraction for East Bristol, um, and another uh, another um, event that is something that we can use uh, very proactively and positively uh, for the town. Thank you. Yes, sir, sir. Um, thank you, Chair. Indeed, I was uh, helping work uh, with Mr. Jones and Tick for many months until quite recently, but it's a bit like um, buses, you see, we wait all these years for the buses and then two bonfire starters <laughs> <laughs> because uh, we've got an Ashurst Wood bonfire starter with a firework um, procession through the village on October the 29th this year. So if anybody wants to come and see how it should be done, I'm uh, <laughs> 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 a 
to step it away a bit more than the Wednesday one because it's just only too much fun any one person. <laughs> <laughs> but what I would say is that Ms. Jones has been bent backwards to uh, try to um, meet the concerns of the the community. And I know there will be uh, troubles and concerns raised ahead as I'm seeing myself in actual split with uh, noise and fireworks and environmental considerations, what happens about the wildlife, etc. But I think those things are all capable of being managed. I think there'd be like there were 50, like nearly 50 fireworks bonfire society in Sussex, and they all manage to do it in from small villages to big town centres. So they these things are all capable of being managed, but I've got no doubt that uh, Mr. Jones will uh, do whatever he can to uh, to keep all those concerns uh, um, to allay those fears as much as possible. And I'm very supportive of his uh, proposition and be happy to support the press. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Are there any other comments or questions from Council? Councillor Owen. Just to clarify, are we solely voting on whether or not to grant the use of the, the logo or the crest? Yes. Okay. There's no application at this point for any grants. No. We understand. Any other questions? Okay. Well, I shall, I believe, Councillor Swedden, Mr. Chairman of the FGMP, and uh, you would probably like to propose this. You seem supportive and leave to the council. So. Uh, yes, thank, thank you, Town Mayor. Uh, yes, I, I, would, I would like to uh, propose this and hopefully it will be a su success. Thank you. Could I have a second? I'll have a second. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's all okay. So, all in favour? That looks unanimous. Okay, sure. thank you. Moving on to <coughs> item 13. Um, it's the East Minster Town Council Community Governance Review. Um, we've got it, I think. It's obviously looking to reduce the number of councillors from 19 to 16 at the Town Council level. Uh, we've discussed this in the past, over the last couple of months, um, probably longer actually, and it's really following in line with the boundary review um, of the Mid Sussex boundaries which are, are impacted in East Grinstead. Uh, you can see the proposal is to reduce from 19 to 16. There are some creation of some new wards within the town aligning with Mid-Sussex um, and um, obviously the information is aligned, it is clearly in there which you can. Um, I mean, I, before I propose, I, mean, I think I've proposed we follow this through, but I think I'd like to hear comments from comments from councillors. I'm, I'm supporting. Councillor Raymond. I think this is a great idea, primarily because it will increase competition on the candidates. At the moment, we have 19 seats, and a lot of local parties, Liberal Democrats, the Labour Party, UKIP, etc., simply can't put up 19 candidates and we saw in 2019 that I believe um, Councillor Swetland and Councillor Pico, you are unopposed at town council level. Now if we reduce down the number of seats, that would allow for fuller competition within each seat because each local party, which don't, don't really have that many volunteers that wouldn't expand, will be able to fill them all. So it definitely fulfills the criteria mentioned in the report. And I would also add, as I would, that it will save residents over four years, or each taxpayer rather, about one pound 22 pence. And I'm sure some residents would really appreciate that. Okay, so unless there's any other comments, I would, I would go to propose this. Oh, sorry, uh, yeah, thank you, Chamber. Um, can I just um, uh, clarify the situation? I believe, oh. uh, obviously, it's at uh, least as district council, it's come from the boundary commission through the district council control the electoral uh, system. Um, this is a second consultation going out to the public. Can the town public just first of all confirm that? Because that's my understanding. That's Secondly, absolutely what's in front the, of feed, yes. the feedback that I got from many residents on the first consultation was that it was very poorly communicated and they just didn't understand what it was about. Right. So my, my request uh, and I know that it's the district council looking at the town clerk now, mm -hmm. but as a town council, can we just make it crystal clear Exactly what's involved, um, so that people fully understand. Yes, Councillor Swetland, 
Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Chairman. Yes, I believe in the first instance when the district council put, the, put this out, it was, uh, well, to be quite honest, uh, not very well written yeah. and it's difficult yeah. to understand. Uh, the, the town clerk actually uh, rewrote it in a much more layman's terms language. And I, I, I think that was better. So we need to keep an eye on the responses or how it's written on this second consultation. Um, so we, we, we're, we're just keeping an eye, eye on that one and, and make sure it, the public understand perfectly, perfectly well. Because, um, you know, again, we have to align with the, with the district boundaries. Up there is a key issue for the parish boundaries to along the district, otherwise it'd be very confusing. And also the fact is that uh, if you look at uh, Hayes Heath, they've got a similar professional Bit more town clocks, slightly, slightly larger, slightly larger than us, and they've only got sixteen councils. So you know, it's the reasons. Thank you, Town Mayor. Okay. So listening to everyone's comments, I propose uh, the following: in, in favour of adoption of what's in here, the council confirmed that they are broadly accepting of the proposals, providing significant similarity was retained by the district and town boards as proposed. The clerk was asked to convey this through the appropriate channels and work with MSDC to come up with an effective communication campaign as the, as the campaign in the first stage of communication wasn't clear, etc. and was confusing. Or was that effect on? Um, I have no idea what the district have already put out, but I'm more than happy to go back to them and uh, ask to see to see it before it goes out, but I mean, we've already had some notifications of things already, but I wholeheartedly agree and I will, I will make sure that that's what the council wants. I'll make sure that happens. Okay. So I propose I have a second. I want to second that down there. Do we thank you. All those in favour? I think that is uh, unanimous. Okay. <laughs> Right. Um, that is there being no further business. I end this meeting at uh, it's, yes seven fifty seven, and uh, the next meeting will be at the town council will be Monday the third of October two thousand twenty two. And I invite you all to join me in the mess parlour for refreshments. <laughs>